Jimmy John's. It's freaky fucking fast. Jimmy John's. Fuck yeah. Holy sh! Jimmy John's. When you're hungry as fuck. Oh, you want a number five? It's already done. James, how'd you get so fast? Cause it's fast. You wanna split it? You better fucking believe it. How fast are you ready to go? Jimmy John's. You got eight bucks in like fifteen minutes. Jimmy John's. I peed in the pickle bucket. Oh, uh, is it a prop sandwich? Yo, it's your boy Dr. Destry here, and we're back with the appointments with Dr. Destry. Today we have an appointment with um, my old improv teacher, Zach Bartz. He uh, runs this show called The Shithole. Yes, it's actually called The Shithole. I've seen many shows there. A lot of talent. Amazing talent at that. Zach isn't only an actor. He dabs in some art. He currently has an art line called The Critters. But Let's have Zach explain better. What's up? I'm Zach. <laughs> Hell yeah. Thanks for having me, dude. Anytime. Thanks for letting me interview you. You got it. Uh, so, what really got you into acting? So, I got into acting on accident. I was trying to get into a painting class when I was a freshman in high school. And the painting class was full. So they put me in a theater class, which I thought, like whatever, you know, I was running track at the time and it was the last class I had before track and I hated track. So I learned to kind of savor, it was kind of like the snooze button, like it was like, all right, I got just a little more time before I'm about to be miserable. So theater was kind of this uh, comfort zone for me and when we started learning about improvisation, it clicked. And I was like, oh my God, this is really fun. I like doing this. And through there, I was like, well, there's, I mean, Wichita, Kansas at the time, not a lot of improv, and I was under 18, so it's not like I could just go to a bar and do improv. Uh, I needed to find a way um, that would still accommodate my desire to do it. So I started to get into theater, and through that, I found out, oh, I can get a scholarship for this, I can go to school for this, and oh my god, I can, you know, get a degree for it, and uh, it's kind of set course for uh, pursuing that as my passion. And that was 14 years ago. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, who, who's your favorite comedian and why? I think if I had to bring it down to like one person, I'd say Steve Martin. Just because Steve Martin had such an interesting career. He's got an amazing autobiography that's called Born Standing Up. And he talks about the miserable failure of beginning stand-up comedy all the way up to the unrivaled success of having the Blues Brothers open for him in front of thousands of people. Uh, and then walking away from comedy to pursue, you know, performance in film and writing films and books and plays and, and now playing music. And he he's just this creative spirit that, you know, finds himself articulating in one sort of medium at a time, but then when he's done with it, he washes his hands and moves on to something else. So, uh, I've always had a lot of respect for him. Uh, in your opinion, how has improv involved in the last decade, considering the recent events, i.e. the Me Too movement, uh, the Trump rallies, the LGBT community? I think improvisation and comedy as, as a whole has had to step up to accountability and accessibility. Comedy needs to know its place in creating action and creating safe and comfortable places. And comedy isn't just about blowing off steam or some, some stand-up comedians or even improvisers will go, everything's on the table, everything, you can make jokes about anything. And that's not true, you know? Empathy, compassion, and shared human experiences, uh, especially when it comes to trauma, it's not on the table just for somebody else to try to make a good joke, to, to use somebody else's experience. And so understanding that, you know, what is this content? How are we going to approach it? And how is it presented, you know, in, in looking at, you know, diversity within a writer's room, so to speak, or you know, looking at a lineup, how many people in this lineup, you know, are straight white dudes, like we need to, reassess and make change within these otherwise, you know, static 
trends in comedy. So I think the last 10 years have been a great catalyst for the change that is necessary and is being brought on by this new generation of comedians. What if? Um, why perform in Chicago and not any other place? Chicago is the epicenter of American comedy. This is where, you know, it, it, it goes here and it can go somewhere else, but it always comes back. Chicago is the nucleus, whereas everything else is this electron that rotates around. And Chicago is the, it's the center that everyone will come back through. Everything from, you know, the formation of Second City and the creation of improvisation and the creation of long form improvisation to uh, the, the voices that it articulates, that it creates. Um, Chicago is an accessible city for you to do the work. You might have to eat a little bit of shit and then you get up and you do it again and you keep doing it again. And it's not about, hey, can I use this as a stepping stone to get somewhere else? Hey, maybe I'll start this podcast with this famous person's kid. You know, <laughs> these sorts of like ulterior motives that you see in Los Angeles or New York City. Chicago is a place where you can fail and get back up. And if you are looking at your work for the right reasons and say, okay, okay, this is how I can make my work better. This is how, you know, I can be more fruitful in my pursuit of art instead of, okay, how, how do I make the big bucks? How do I impress this person? Uh, Chicago will provide it for you, but you gotta, you gotta sift through it. And also the fact that Chicago is this, all these series of neighborhoods that you really can, you know, without a car, you can get around and you can go do a ton of different shows in one night. You can see a show every single night of the week and all over the town too. You see so many different voices that are really in the city, but are coming into the city. For shithole, we've had people play from six continents. We haven't met the comedians in the park. But everywhere else, people have come through. So um, Chicago has made the most sense. It did when I first came up here in 2008, and it does to this day as I continue to work in here. Uh, what made you create the shithole? So shithole was a product of circumstance. There is a quote. That is, seek not to follow the footsteps of the wise, seek what they saw. So it's not about doing what somebody else did, it's about what was the product of their circumstance, and then what is the product of your own. I was producing and running comedy shows just like, like the standard route of somebody in Chicago pursuing comedy, but I was doing them standard route at a sports bar in you know, the Gold Coast, we're on the second floor of this sports bar that's covered in Rolling Stone poster covers. We're having an uninstall a stripper pole just so that we can use the stage. <laughs> We're out in front of the front door with flyers saying, do you like comedy? Do you like comedy? Do you, do you know this person? Well, we got somebody who opened for them in Toledo. Like, you should come in. We'll buy your first beer. Then, uh-oh, Cubs game's on. We're going to have to cancel the show. Oh, Bears game, it's going to go. You guys are going to get bumped. Or... Somebody comes in, big spender's got a huge tab, decides they want to talk through the whole show. The bar is like, that guy can stay, and we hope he's here every Tuesday instead of y'all, because you guys are doing this show that nobody's coming to. Like The idea is the priority of where the venue is putting the weight is going to be on the customer, because they are a business. With Shithole, we said, what if we could start a show that could combat all of that. If we could not do those things that we hated to do, but make them purposeful, how can they be tools and not gimmicks? So we said, well, first of all, it needs to be in a place that has no other reason to be there except for that show. There should be no confusion. There's no fireball shot special. There's no 50 cent wings that got you in the door. You're there for the show. And we thought, okay, we can use tech and etiquette to transform any space. Because if we treat a space like it's the Chicago theater, people will feel that way. Because you can be in a space like the Steppenwolf Theater, the Chicago Theater, Second City, and if there's only two people in the audience, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> 
But if you're in a garage full of 100 people who want to be there, who cares what it's called? This place is, there is an invested audience. There is a community instead of a transaction. There's true participation coming through on both ends. And shithole was also going to be this thing that, well, how do we make people invested? We don't tell them where it is. We don't tell them when it is. We won't have a website. Everyone who's there will message for details. And if they reach out to us, we'll tell them an intersection and a phone number. And if they get that far and they call us, we'll let them in. We'll be happy that they're there. And if they talk during the show after we've told them not to, we'll ask them to leave. <laughs> and through that, the people who are there by the end, it's the cream of the fucking crop. It's the people who want to participate. And they're the ones that we wish would have shown up to that, you know, stripper pole bar that we were at, you know. But they're... It, that wasn't the right place. It, it was like trying to hold water in your hands. It's not the right, you know, vessel for what you got. We needed to find, uh, we needed to create the own, our own product to circumstance. And by starting in garages and then attics, because we realized, oh, we don't have an address. And really, it's not about one place. Shithole isn't a venue, it's a show. It's not about where we are, it's about what we're doing where we're at. Through that, we can move the show. And then we started going to, you know, so Cards Against Humanity was building their now headquarters. But while it was a construction site in 2014, we were invited to come in there and do shithole amongst the rubble. You know, when Second City had that huge fire, it was 2017 or so, they redid the entire second floor training center. The day before it opened to the public, shithole did the first show there while it was still a construction site. Where, whether, I mean, we took over the Soho house, which is super, you know, proper and elitist, and we said, we want to be able to use the loading dock and make your the Soho house members meet us on the street corner and come in through the alley and drink Miller Lite by the trash cans. <laughs> that's, that's how we want to do this show. And we want to be able to bring, you know, our invested people in with this. I mean, we've done 545 shows, over 38 venues in the last seven years. Um, we've been secret headliners for the Chicago Improv Festival, uh, for comedy festivals at uh, Improv Olympic and all these different places, but the core never changed. No show has ever costed money to get into. No show is promoted. Um, you know, we try to keep as firm a grip on that and then if people talk, they're asked to leave. And shithole has always been a matter of, you know, this is it. It's not a step to something else. There's this Ursula Le Guin quote. She says, it's important to have an end to journey towards, but in the end, it is the journey that matters. Shithole has never been about trying to get to something else. It's been about, this is it, and we get to do it again. And each time is the entire, both process and product. So, making good work with good people, and that's why we started it, and that's why we continue to do it seven years later. I know, bro, actually. Like, I've always wondered, I've always wondered why, you know, you say, like, a uh, message for details and everything. Is like, I'm like, why didn't, you know, you put out the date, like, the time? I mean, you, you do put out the time, but, like, you know, why you had to personally message you for the details and everything, but now I understand why. That's it, right? Because if I tell you, hey, I got a comedy show coming up, it's a four week run. You're not gonna go to the first week because you think it's gonna get sold out. The second week, you're gonna have plans. The third week, it's gonna snow. And the fourth week, ah, that's the last one tonight? I just, I'm not up to it, had a long day. And then boom, you knew about four shows, you didn't go to any of them, but, if I say shitholes tonight, where is it? Won't tell you. It's like, uh, can you tell me? Okay, give you an intersection. Where? Call me then. Can I call you now? No. Call me at eight. If they're still there, hell yeah. Because you don't know when the next show is going to be. Granted, we've done 545 in under seven years. We do one to three a week. But the one that you might miss might have somebody from Saturday Night Live on it. Maybe it's, you know, in the Chicago Design Museum. Maybe we're the after party for Pitchfork. 
maybe we're just in a gnarly basement with some people who just moved here from Ohio. You know, you don't know what the show is gonna be, but you know it's gonna be passionate, prepared, invested, and that there's going to be a standard of tech and etiquette. And, and fuck you, it's tonight. Well, yes or no. And that's all we need, because the show is gonna happen whether or not one person shows up. Uh, we know people are gonna be there. Because we will, <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> all right, so. But yeah, you see, there are other secret shows, comedy shows, music shows. Uh, in my opinion, a lot of those are, are gimmicks because they say, shh, secret show. And it's a promoted post or a sponsored ad on Facebook or Instagram. Or they're, shh, it's a secret. Spend $25 and we'll tell you where it is. It's like, boo, that was a marketing tech. Like, this is bullshit. You is inauthentic. It's like, have you ever seen the movie Pet Cemetery? The Stephen King movie? I. It's cool. The I premise have. is they lose their child, and the child dies. So, and then they bury the kid in a pet cemetery, the kid comes back, and the kid is evil. The kid looks the same, but is doing nefarious shit because there's no soul. We like to believe that we are the kid with the soul. The reason that we don't promote, the reason it's secret, we'll tell you. We're just not putting it online. We just don't have a website. There's just not a Facebook event for it. The people who are like, shh, it's a big old secret. I'm gonna send you an event to it. Like here, here's an invite. It's like, that's not a secret. Like you're trying to get me to engage. You are, this is a soulless gimmick used to try to sell tickets and better your brand and not authentically make art. But that's just my opinion. Everyone's in town, so like, mm. Hell yeah. <laughs> and now, speaking of that, like, my question is, um, you know, I, I've noticed, because I've been to your shows a few times, after then the next day, you usually tag everyone who's to the show. Well, what's the reason behind that? So that came from finding a way to honor everyone's participation within the show. Because I tell people, thank you for being a part of it. Uh, you know, in the same way that when I'm, at the art museum, somebody says like, oh, no, I'm not an artist, but I like art. I'll tell them, that's so important. We need people <laughs> to like art because otherwise, a lot of the famous paintings that we love would never have been commissioned. You know, the participation, it, it you need somebody to want it and to appreciate it in order to actually have it. And for the thank you for Shithole has always been a matter of who came to the show, who participated as an audience member, who was a part of that community. Because our performers are performers for four minutes and they're audience members for an hour and 56. With the thank you post, it not only tells people, hey, here's the list of the performers. If you liked them, it's literally the running order. So you can click and find out who they are and you know engage with them, whether you want to book them or see more of their shows. Um, but if you just came to the show, I'm saying, hey, I noticed. I'm tagging you in it because you are a participant. And I'm thankful that you were at the show. Because when I was a younger performer and coming into Chicago, I would go to a show and nobody nobody had to, but no, no one would say anything to me or my friends that we were with. They would just treat us like we were just kind of like random kids that snuck in. And if one of these veteran performers or these show producers would have been like, Hey, thanks so much for coming. It means a lot that you were here. Uh, stick around. You know, I hope you see the next show. We would have stayed. We would have been like, hell yeah, this place is tight. These people care. They want us to be a part of this. But otherwise, we were kind of felt like we were in some cool kids club. It was an inconvenience. We weren't supposed to be there. It's this, so much of this level of comedy shows or comedy clicks where it's like, oh, they're not funny. I don't like them. It's like everyone's, everyone needs a chance to get there. Or at least to get me interested. For Shithole, it's never been about content. It's been about the intention. You know, are you well-intended? Are you passionate prepared? Are you doing good work? I might not be a fan of exactly what you're saying, but if it's from coming from the right place, then I can say I'm, I appreciate the work that you're putting into it. And the thank you is me saying like, hey, you might have been a performer who came to the show last night. You're an audience member tonight, but I know you're capable of performing. 
thank you for being on the show. I see that you're participating. And for me, that puts you higher up as a producer and as an artist looking at peers. I have more respect for it, that being an active participant within the community. So, and uh, it also just kind of lets people know when, you know, that's the only way you'll find out about the next show too. Is at the end of that post I say, shithole again, and then I say what day it will be. So if you're really looking, that's your clue. So it's like, oh shit, there's not one for Sunday. Oh shit, there's one on Wednesday. Shithole again on Wednesday, message for details. You know, where is Wednesday? All right, I'll tell you on Wednesday, you know. So it's just another way to um, try to try to be focused and engaged. Yeah. Um, was there anything else you wanted to do before becoming an actor? Before becoming an actor? Uh, no. No, it was... I mean, I felt... When I found improvisation, it was like... It's like in Pulp Fiction where he opens the briefcase and all that light is coming out. It's just like, oh my god, like this is... I felt the fire. I knew that there was the work I wanted to do. It was just a matter of how I'm going to do it. And I'd say since committing my life to performance and improvisation in general, uh, I have taken on other roles. Like obviously, I uh, became a painter, and that was 100% spun out of shithole and the idea of improvisation. And these two things gave me the equipment to say, yeah, you can, you can make some, you can make some art, just it's a matter of doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. Consistency and persistency. So um, that's that's the main thing that I would say I now feel like I want to do. And uh, and then the teaching, finding new ways to teach. I came up with a program that I taught at Second City that was called Painting for Improvisers, a way to mix the way that I found painting, which is through improvisation, and pairing improv exercises with painting exercises, and showing those performers, you paid for the, the gear, you know how to improvise, but maybe you didn't make it on a Herald team, you didn't get to SNL, that's fine, you still got the equipment, use it for something else, parlay that into writing, parlay it into cooking, parlay it into, you know, music production, or let me show you that you can paint. Because a lot of people say, oh, I'm not good at drawing. It's like, sure, you're not yet, but you're not gonna ever get any better if you don't even start. And improvisation has the same tenets that will help somebody get on stage and create work. It's the same thing that will help them do it on a page or a canvas. They just might not be able to give themselves that permission. Because since it's tangible, there's accountability instantly and you can't just be like, oh, yes, and I made a good painting. You could be like, oh, it sucks. Uh, this one sucks. Got to fix it now. But there's there's a, a level of learning to let go and giving yourself permission um, that improv, in my opinion, brings. So that's, that's the, for now, it's the only thing I want to do is to paint and perform. Okay. Uh, my final question is, um, is there any links or social media to the shithole? And if so, where are they? Shithole purposely does not have a Facebook page. There's not a Twitter. Um, the only thing that we have, we have an Instagram that shows the posters. So Lauren Eglund makes all the shithole shirts, posters, the stickers, the buttons, all that. Lauren has always made our design. And day of, we post a poster in the morning um, on my individual Facebook and I tag the performers and say shithole tonight message for details. Those posters are kick ass and they deserve to be seen. And there also needs to be one place that people who aren't necessarily my Facebook friend can see that poster and kind of get that, it's like the bat signal, you know, oh shit, it's going down, shitholes tonight, you know. Uh, especially because we don't have a set date or calendar. So, Shithole HQ on Instagram will have the posters and we'll post them day of. 
Um, but that's it. Otherwise, shitholeinfo at gmail.com is the best way to find out more about us and about the next show. Okay. Well, that's all the questions for today. Um, I thank you for your time. Hell yeah. Cooperation. Handshake. Handshake. Hell yeah. <laughs> and that's been Appointments with Dr. Destery. <laughs> <laughs>